Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So in today's video, we're going to go over the top 10 Berkshire Hathaway portfolio holdings as of third quarter of 2020. So I'm really excited about this company. Uh, I'm going to give a very high level uh, summary of each company and I'm going to offer my opinion on whether I think uh, these companies are worth pursuing as an investment. Uh, but as always, please be sure to do your own research uh, before you do any sort of investing uh, or you know, you can always speak to a licensed professional as well. Okay, so let's get straight to it. You know, before we begin, please be sure to like and subscribe to this video. Uh, this just makes it easier for other viewers to get access to this video based on YouTube's algorithm. Thank you. Okay, so in number 10 spot, we have Charter Communications. Uh, you know, currently th this company has a, a really good price earnings to growth ratio of one. Um, you know, that's a really good ratio to have. That, that means the company is growing at, at the rate in terms of what it's priced at. Uh, the future or earnings per share growth in the next three to five years is, is looking really strong. And, and one of the key things that they're doing is that they're expanding residential and commercial internet uh, plus small and business customer base, as well as new 5G uh, service offerings. Um, some of the cons are, you know, this company has higher debt than, than other companies in this industry. You know, and that raises the question that maybe this company may run the risk of having trouble meeting their short term uh, financial debt obligations. Uh, some additional cons are, you know, this this company obviously operates in a in a very saturated and competitive market in the U.S. Uh, video market. You know, there's there's lots of competition, and and this company is experiencing a decline in in video subscriptions, uh, video uh, customer subscriber base. Um, so you know, o overall, I think you know this company has a uh, strong strong growth uh, in the future. Um, you know, and I think just getting a better understanding of, of the, the market and the competition that's out there, uh, this could potentially be uh, a pretty good pick. Okay, on to number nine. Uh, number nine is Wells Fargo. Uh, so, the, you know, this Wells Fargo, as of right now, you know, has a, a pretty strong uh, price to sales ratio of 1.4, which was higher than the industry average. Um, you know, as of right now, the, the expected earnings per share growth rate versus, you know, 2021 and 2020 is, is pretty good. You know, Wells Fargo, you know, has uh, is, is benefiting from the loans and, and the deposit growth in their business and, and also has a strong capital position and, and, and strong credit quality. Um, some of the cons based off financial analysis is this stock is, you know, I, I think it's a little overvalued. Um, you know, the future outlook within the next two to five years is negative, um, you know, and, and given that they have, you know, below average corporate profit margins of, of uh, 1.4% um, as of as of 2020, trailing 12, 12 months. Um, you know, some of the other ongoing issues with this with Wolf Fargo is, is their litigation issues, uh, which they've had the past couple of years. And, and also, you know, they're experiencing a, a low mortgage income um, based off based on the, the low interest rates that we're seeing in 2020. Um, so I, I don't think this is, is a really good pick. You know, I, I think Warren Buffett may have invested in Wells Fargo um, a couple years back from 2020, um, possibly when when times were, uh, you know, valuations or, or timing was better for him. Um, but as of as of 2020 fourth quarter, I, I don't think you know Wells Fargo is is uh, a strong investment pick. Um, so I'm gonna vote uh, not investing in Wells Fargo. Okay, next uh, next company we have Davida. Uh, this was a really interesting company. You know, it's it's a it's it's in the health health industry, health Medicare industry, and um, you know what we found was this company is is undervalued. Uh, with a P ratio of 16 times, which is lower than the industry average of, of 20 times. Um, you know, they have a strong expected growth within the next three to five years. And they also have uh, really good profit margins compared to the industry average. And, you know, some of the cons are there's a, you know, over the last five years, uh, there's been a 2.3% sales, sales decline. And, you know, this company has uh, above average debt to asset ratio. So, uh, I, I think if we can get a better understanding of the the sales sales decline the last five years, and also get comfortable with their balance sheet, uh, I think this company is, is promising just given their their future outlook and, and growth potential. 
Um, so I, I would say, you know, maybe a little bit more research is required on Davida before I, I, feel, I can say, you know, this is a company worth investing in. Uh, all right, next company we have Moody's. Uh, so Moody's, you know, is is a as a rate, rating agency, and what we found was, you know, they have a slightly slightly um, optimistic uh, expected growth compared to the industry. Um, I was really impressed by their profit margins with with profit margins at forty three percent, eleven percent higher than the industry average. Uh, Moody's is well positioned for growth uh, on the back of its dominant position in the credit rating industry. Uh, so they have a, a good market position, and you know what they're doing is is they're they're looking for new ways to diversify their revenue base and synergies from strategic acquisitions. And so you know some of the some of the trends and patterns we've seen from successful companies that, that, is that they're always looking uh, to increase their revenues and and you know such as Moody's they're looking to buy new companies that will add value uh, to to their stock. So. Um, classic uh, Philip Fisher, you know, strategy there as well. Um, some of the cons is, is this company is, is twice as leveraged as other companies in this industry. Um, and, you know, they could also run into to the issues of not having enough liquidity to, to meet their short-term debt obligations. Um, another con that we found was persistent increase in expenses and challenging operating backdrop are expected to hurt Moody's financials. Uh, there's and then you know there's obviously lots of competition in the credit rating industry, uh, but overall I think it's a solid pick. Um, you know it's a solid pick. You know, this company is 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 working to to increase their revenue. Uh, you know positive outlook in the next three to five years. So um, I think it's a solid pick, and I think it's definitely worth looking more into Moody's. All right, number six we have U.S. Bancor. So U.S. Bancor, you know. Again, it's in the financial and services industry, banking industry, and um, you know they have they have a decently uh, positive out, outlook. You know, with with a you know slightly better expected growth um, amongst other competitors. Uh, sales are are slightly higher than the industry average. Um, you know, they have a profit margin of twenty three percent, which is four percent higher than the industry average. Uh, looking at their balance sheet, you know, I think they're in good financial health and they're able to meet any short-term and, and, and long-term financial obligations. Um, what's really um, uh, attractive about this 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 bank is is the company pays out 55% of earnings in dividends. So again, this could be one of your stocks that is just reliable in dividend earnings. Uh, and you know you could you, you know you could use those dividends to reinvest into the same company or you can invest in other companies as well. Uh, the cons was you know I, I think this company is slightly overvalued just comparing to the industry. Uh, it has a price to earnings growth ratio of 7.4 uh, with the industry average being uh, 5.2. So, um, you know, that raises the question of maybe there are other uh, banks or, or financial institutions that, that may be a better choice or perhaps you're you know better off just investing in a financial uh, ETF. OK, next company we have uh, Krav Haynes. Um, you know, the, the pros we found was they have a strong sales sales track record the last five years, uh, increasing 17.99% compared to the industry average uh, of 1.4. So really strong sales the last five years. However, they've been really uh, negatively impacted by COVID-19 coronavirus in 2020. Um, as of right now, there's a negative outlook on, on their earnings to growth uh, earnings per share to growth ratio uh, of negative. 4% compared to the industry average of positive 5%. So I think this company is up for uh, a really uh, tough storm and, and, and to weather the next three to five years. Um, also, what Kraft is experiencing is, is a decline in their Canadian sales uh, segment with, with uh, recent sales declining 2.2% year over year in the third quarter of 2020. Uh, so you know that's going to be an issue if if you know their markets start to decline in sales. Um, again, we 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 know that you know what makes a company a, a strong investment is a continuous increase in in their sales revenue. Uh, another issue that Crafts is going through at the moment is is the fact that there's higher commodity prices, uh, and sp specifically in dairy. Um, so I think that's going to be an ongoing issue, you know, and I think this has to do with broader uh, macroeconomic uh, um, 
events that are happening with the Federal Reserve in the U.S., uh, is, you know, print, printing money and issuing stimulus package. Um, I think that the, the, the more you increase the, the money supply, it's going to devalue the, the U.S. dollar and I, what's going to make the commodities. And, and of course, we're seeing, uh, you know, shocks in the supply chain as well. So uh, that that's going to affect commodity prices. And um, I think, you know, craft is going to continue to have some, some challenges with, uh, you know, getting higher expenses. Um, so I think, you know, probably a company to stay away from just given the, the current outlook and, uh, you know, again, this is probably one of those companies that Warren Buffett has held for a long time. And, you know, he's benefited from the strong sales growth the last five years. But, you know, at this point, you know, they, they might be looking into reevaluating whether it's it's maybe they reduced their position in their overall portfolio, um, which we are seeing in his portfolio. And we'll get to the, you know, the top five as well. Okay, next company. We have American Express Company. Uh, this was a really interesting and attractive company, and I think this is one of the companies that I'm going to be doing more research on, uh, just given the, the current state of the stock price. Um, you know, I, I do think this company is undervalued uh, compared to the industry average, and and also, you know, it has a, a very positive outlook the next three to five years uh, compared to the industry. Um, you know, I think what's, what we're seeing with American Express is 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 that obviously coronavirus is uh, affecting its revenue growth uh, in year 2020 and th this this um, revenue stress is is you know forecasted and um, expected to to remain uh, stressed going into year 2021 but I think if if American Express can um, uh, weather the storm in 2021 2020 and 2020 I think that this is a company that that will prevail. And I think that there's potential, uh, plenty of upside um, on 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 this current you know um, environment that we're in. So definitely a company I'm going to be look, looking at. Uh, you know they're undervalued. They're strong expected growth. Uh, I think I think it's definitely worth a shot. Uh, next company. Now we're on to top three, and it's going to be Coca-Cola. Uh, so you know I think my my overall my overall sense of Coca-Cola is you know this is a company that's been around for for decades. Um, you know, they've been through great economies and they've been through uh, uh, weak economies. And I, I think what, what you know, they do well is they, they adapt. And that's one of the things that they're doing now with their, their current portfolio is they're uh, streamlining, you know, 200 new master brands. And, and I think that, you know, over the next three to five years, I think this is a company that's going to uh, find ways to bring new products out to the market that consumers like. And they're going to continue to make profits. Um, I mean, you see that this company has really strong profit margins of 29%, uh, 13% higher than industry average. And they also have really high uh, return on equity compared to the industry. However, um, you know, I do think, you know, this company is overvalued. Um, the sales have declined 4% in the last five years. And, you know, they're experiencing a decline in their market share for non-alcoholic and uh, ready-to-drink beverages. So... I think they're they're facing some some tough competition, but again, I think this is a company that's going to be around for for a while, just given their strong profit margins and and again their their efforts to to bring new products out to the market. So um, you know, I think I think overall, this is probably a company that's going to generate you know consistent returns, maybe not above average returns, but you know I think that the Coca Cola is going to be around for a while. Um, okay, next stock we have. Uh, Bank of America, uh, another financial institution with strong profit margins of 21% trailing 12 month. Uh, they have a strong balance sheet, uh, strong dividend policy. They're they're paying 35% of their earnings back to shareholders, and and modest sales growth the last five years. Um, this and Bank of America is sort of uh, facing the same challenges that Wells Fargo is with uh, the current you know zero interest you know near zero interest rates. Um, due to the coronavirus and just in general, you know, the Federal Reserve has kept interest rates low. Um, and, and also, because of the interest rates, there's low return on, on the mortgages that are issued uh, for the banks. So, uh, you know, this is a large cap stock. Um, I, I think Bank of America uh, is, is going to be around. Uh, I don't think this company will generate substantial great returns, but I think that you can rely on 
on consistent and strong dividends from this company. And last but not least, uh, number one spot, we have Apple. Um, you know, as, as we've seen recently, uh, Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway ha has, has increased their position, uh, a majority of their portfolio, uh, into Apple. And, you know, I think there's plenty of reasons why, why they would do that. Num uh, number one, I, I think they see Apple as, as a really uh, uh, good company that's undervalued and, and, and very fairly priced. Uh, with a price earnings growth ratio of 2.9% or, or 2.9 times compared to the industry average of 3.1. Um, so I think right now, uh, third quarter, fourth quarter of 2020, um, with the amount of sales and, and, and earnings, I think Apple is, is selling at a decent price. Uh, and they have really strong profit margins of 24%, controlling 12 uh, compared to the industry average of 22%. Uh, they have an uh, outstanding return on equity of 75% trailing 12 month. And one, one of the things that they're doing now is they're, they're building the, their service business and they have, they're experiencing a strong adoption to their Apple Pay system uh, as well as growing their Apple Music subscriber customer base. Uh, so it's interesting that they're, you know, merging to, you know, these Apple Pay, which is could be seen as sort of a financial uh, service. Uh, so... You know what now some of their cons is and this is the issue that i have with apple is is their demand in iphone uh, but but significantly more during coronavirus um you know they're they're seeing a lower demand for their iphones and i, I think part of it is because you know as a customer you know i'm an apple iphone owner um, i don't see any dramatic increase in their technology um, i think it's it's very similar and they, they offer minimal upgrades every time they release new phones um, so I think that that's something that, you know, given that they're that that's one of their big products, I think that's, this, that's something they should look at into offering just better upgrades and more technology in the future. Um, you know, they have a lack of 5G supported devices and, you know, obviously they're in the tech space and there's there's really stiff competition in the tech space. Um, you know, and then the slowing economy in China is also increase, increasing regulatory hassles and, uh, you know, also creating more of a, a headaches for Apple. But overall, you know, I think, you know, Apple has a very customer loyal, uh, loyal from uh, customer loyal base, um, and you know they have really great margins, really strong sales. Uh, definitely see why Warren Buffett would would want to invest in Apple because there's just it's a really big market, and they have a lot of they have, they've captured a lot of the market share in the in the tech space. Um, so there you have it, top ten holdings of Berkshire Hathaway. Again, really high level uh, points here. In, in other videos, we're going to dive deeper into some of these companies that we feel um, are worth looking into. And, um, you know, we look forward to putting those videos out for you. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you like in, in, you know, this video, please feel free to leave a, a comment down below. Like, subscribe, and share this video. And uh, we look forward to talking to you in the next video. Uh, thank you for watching.